Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Also happy new year. It's 2024 so I hope that you have a beautiful year that you can accomplish all of your personal goals, that you're full of health and love and family and that you can travel. Um, this year I am planning to you know retaking the whole traveling and I just wanted to sit down really and just do a little chit chat because I know I haven't done one of these in a very long time um, and I've being feeling a certain way uh to talk about the subject of death um back on december 11 so last month just a little bit over a month today um i lost my father-in-law and he was in a lot of aspects a father figure to me if you know my story i'm an immigrant so you know my direct family members chose to stay in the dominican republic um and not continue like the residency in the Uni united states so i was the only one that i was like no i like the lifestyle i'm just gonna do the thing and um you know having him he was like somebody i would just constant constantly see and having him deterior deteriorate um and just like the whole death process of death i'm 33 years old guys and i just wanted to put these out there too because this is the first time I lose somebody so close to me. I saw my great-grandmother pass away when I was, what, 16-ish? And she was my great-grandma. She lived a very long life. She died at 97 or something, just short 100 years old. And I remember seeing the whole process, but I was very young. I saw her take her last breaths too, but it was very young. And I feel now I am more mature, I um, have a better better understanding and everything that went that went down, you know, after the fact and Googling everything, it seems to be normal. And I wanted to share with you guys my experience with the death um, of my father-in-law. And most, most importantly, just to take out, because I've always been afraid and I feel like I'm always going to have that little bit of fear on... You know what's gonna happen after we die that's you know i hold my faith of christianism um i believe in god and i believe in jesus that's what i've chose to believe but it's a belief and you know it's not gonna be a fact until you know we actually experience it so if i want to be honest with myself we really don't know what's gonna happen after we die we could be heaven and hell it could be some other st stuff we don't even think about we don't know about it could be that nothing happens, but um, that part of fear is always going to be there um, for me, at least, um, because I don't know what's going to happen. And my biggest fear is to suffer or to go somewhere worse. And then on the other hand, sometimes I've been optimistic and I'm like, well, it's going to be better. And, you know, there's books like Life After Life by, um, I think it's Dr. Woody or Murphy. I can't remember his name. I read that book a couple of years ago. And basically, it's a book about what happens after you die because of the there's like 600 or I don't know, a couple hundred uh, people that they interview on, um, you know, when they died physically, like they didn't have a heartbeat, they didn't have a brain activity, nothing was going on for like 20, 30 minutes. It didn't matter your religion, it didn't matter where you came from, your age, your gender, everybody had 16 elements and um nobody wanted to come back from that experience but it seems to be that there's something you know after the fact so i say all of these because um you know if you feel scared of death i am too in a certain i guess in a certain way but um you know experiencing the death and being in the room where you know my relative passed away last month it just made me realize, obviously, there's a lot of trauma, you know, there's a lot of like things, traumatic experiences that you can see somebody go. But if you see them go, like my case, like cancer, it is very painful to watch. But it's also like very natural, if that makes sense. It's like a, they just stop breathing. That's basically how it goes down. And for him, like the past two weeks, um, the, the week, the two weeks prior his departure, he started to do like weird things. Like he would call his ex-wife who passed away several years ago, um, you know, at loud. Or he would just be like the night before I had to take him to the ER uh, when, you know, it was like really final. He was like trying to grab something from from the, the, the ground. And I go to the room because I could see him through the window. 
And I said, hey, you know, you need something? And he was like, yeah, just hand me that paper. And also he saw a cat when, like a couple of days before he passed and there was no cat. We look everywhere. He was talking about a white cat. There's been conversations after the fact that he had a white cat. Um, it was a white cat from where he like probably like 20 -ish years ago. And um, it could be that he was seeing it. So he was like, definitely experiencing and seeing things when he was shutting down. That was something that I can tell you, like if you are, we all going to have to go through that at some point in time, we can't help it. And that's one of the biggest like things. And I'll talk about it in the end. But um, anyway, just to go back into the story, like, you know, he did like had those type of like hallucinations and also like a couple of days before he died he went from like really being really really bad to like doing things and i was like feeling so hopeful because i was like oh my god he's finally like recuper uh, he keeps getting better you know and um then i found out later that when people are passing away um that is called like the last energy burst or something so you know he was experiencing that after he got really well really bad then really well and then he just declined on the spiral and never recovered and so you know that is apparently very normal as well and then the whole breathing um i had to exit the hospital a couple of times just because i was suffering and this man was conscious like the whole time until probably the last 30 minutes um, where he started to look up and like, you know, he opened his mouth and later I found out again that's supposed to be very natural, like muscles relax in the whole body and like people that die at the hospital, 99.9% .9 of them, they die looking up and with mouths open. So um, he did that, but the whole breathing, it was like a... And I couldn't understand... Um, at the time what was going on i like you know i saw his oxygen i saw his levels um you know i took care of him the last two weeks of before he you know passed away i was trying to keep an eye on him because you know i knew he was getting older and a few things happened prior in the prior months that were concerning to me like driving against traffic and acting a certain way like confused and and so um you know i started to like make sure he had food and all that and the last two weeks that i was with him I took his blood pressure and um, the machine for COVID, the oxygen machine, and he was stable. There was no reason for me to believe the guy was dying. And that's the thing for me. Like, it's been a big shock to see that if you do blood work, if you do, not always, obviously, I'm, I'm sure there were like MRIs and stuff that show like tumors and cancers because it looked like this cancer had already spread and he did it in a very quick way. So when he went down the spiral, it was just not, he was not, he was never going to make it. Um, so, you know, to me, it was very surprising that blood work was normal. Of course, there was a few things that were like low or high, but just like mine, you know, like the oxygen was like normal. The blood pressure was normal until he finally declined. So that was surprising to me because you would think, like, you know, medical wise, I don't know if I'm making any sense of what I'm saying or not, but, you know, medical wise, I would think like, okay, this is a sign that he's dying or this is another sign because his blood pressure is not this way. And this other thing, oxygen levels is not this way. Like he had the whole machine the whole time and they were able to maintain the oxygen level, but the guy, the, he wouldn't respond to treatment. So there was no way to measure his, you know, his decline, but to see him, how he was acting and how he was decaying and it just makes me wonder you know it makes me think a lot about like you know the quality of life um you know obviously i'm 33 now what 83 93 the best case scenario 40 years 50 i'm not i don't know math 60 years from now um in the best case scenario i'm gonna go if not before and i want to feel healthy i want to do it in a healthy way when I worry so much about being vegan and animal cruelty and I've worried about a million things about life and finances and my house and this and that and the dog, it just makes me realize not everything has to be so serious. And all I can take with me is the experiences that I have. 
so I definitely stopped traveling 2023 because I bought a new house and I, you know, I, I, all the trips that I did in 2023 were mostly um, to a different state where I bought the house. And hold on, guys, because I'm working. It was just being really slow. Oh, there was, okay, there was a different person. It's okay. So, um, you know, it's just a general, not understanding, like a wake up call almost that, you know, all the experiences that we do in life is what we're going to take. So I want to travel more. I, it's okay. I've been obsessing. I've been obsessing with the IRAs and Roth IRAs. I discovered the whole thing. By the way, guys, I want to make a whole video about retirement accounts, especially if you're an immigrant or somebody that has just moved from a different country or even if you don't know what it is because I'm 33 years old. I had no idea what that was. And I feel this has been like a whole, like a the Pandora's box just opened. <laughs> a whole new world, like Aladdin. And so, um, but I discovered the whole Roth IRA and investment. And it's like, I work so hard and I want all these things. But the truth is, I don't know if I'm going to be able to enjoy it. You know, all I have for, like, for sure is today. And that's what we all do. We think we're going to live here forever, but we don't. We don't know that. Anything can happen at any time. And you don't want to live so pessimistic all times, but you do want to be mindful of that. So when you're making general decisions or even important decisions in your life, at least myself, I've changed now to feel like a different way about things, you know, like, is it really worth it? Like, why am I doing this for? Is it going to be like, is this something that can, you know, we can do less? Can we do more? You know, and I want to travel more, you know, um, one of the shocking things of, you know, seeing him pass after he passed was the fact that at the morgue, they don't keep you dressed the same way you were born, the same way you leave. And it does not matter. It does not matter how much money you had in the bank. It does not matter if you had clothes or shoes or an Apple watch or a wallet. All of that just stays here and entering this house because I'm still here at his house. They're trying to sell and there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, entering this house was a big shock for me because I saw his chair that he loved so much and I saw all of his belongings and everything he built for himself, for his wife, for his kids. And he's not going to be able to use that anymore. And, um, you know, why are we working so hard? If we're just going to leave everything here, we can, we're not even allowed to wear clothes at the morgue, you know, and they dress you for the funeral or if they're going to cremate you, they dress you, they ask you for, you know, and all that. But, you know, I would just think, although you're maybe your mind and your consciousness is not there anymore. Um, you know, I would, I, in my mind, I don't know, because I've, again, this is the first time I experienced this. And I'm grateful that, you know, God allowed me to experience this as an adult because I cannot imagine how minor kids have to deal with parents and all this stuff, you know, that comes with death and what happens after death and the implications. Everything changes so quick. And if it's stressful for me, I cannot imagine, um, you know, how minor kids would feel, how people that don't have anywhere to go would feel like, you know, it's, it is definitely eye opening. And so with that being said, um, you know, you want to do experiences in life, just talking about the whole travel for 2024, I am committing and I don't know how I'm going to do this because I just bought a house and I'm broke, but I'm committing to go somewhere new every three months. And I want to do things that I love, that I am passionate about. That means something to me. Like, I don't know if you guys know, but I'm like a NASA fan. Well, I like astronomy. And with that, you know, maybe I guess everything in the space world um, comes with it. And I, you know, I booked myself already a trip to Texas to see the solar eclipse. So I'll be around Texas during the solar eclipse time. And, you know, I just, I just want to live a life that I genuinely can remember. You know, like Avicii. And that's another person who died. Like, he died really young. And he was a tremendous musician. And, you know, to me, the experiences that you, that you, 
that you make or that you experience, um, that's all you can take with you. And hopefully, you know, the other side, when that time comes, is something positive and not necessarily negative because it can get really scary. I remember looking back and you guys probably have felt the same way. There's so many religions. Like, you know, I practice meditation, which I guess is considered like Buddhism. Um, although, I, you know, I um, identify as a Christian. Um, but there's other religions, you know, Islam. And, and, and there's so many religions in the world that you don't know exactly what is what. You know, you, you can go by what is the most popular. But there's a couple of hundred different religions out there. And when you're somebody overthinking, like an overthinker like me, you're like, who is right? Like, but what? But what? Even the same Christianism, there's like a million different branches. You can go here. Some people believe these. And you know, the truth is we don't know. And that's why I don't like to get into these like arguments and conversations unless it's like going to be something that, you know, people can take something from the conversation because we really don't know. So why would I waste my time on something that we genuinely don't know we can assume we have clues we have people that have you know like i said like i have died and come back it's called the near death experiences and they have said certain things and they've been able to you know recount the whole thing from from a distance and see what everybody was doing and where and when and that is surprising because that means that consciousness maybe goes somewhere else but that's as far as it goes you know so Anyway, I've been talking for a while. I think I got it out of my chest. I wanted to share that um, experience and um, and everything. And also the aftermath when somebody dies. For me, I realized I didn't know any of this. Everybody mourns in a different way. And that's a whole topic for itself. But like, you know, my husband, who, is, who was his dad, who passed away, he has not cried that much. And it's been like my surprise. But he's done other things that I'm like, whoa, you know, and I've been more like crying a lot. And I feel like this thing on my chest, like this heaviness, like here on my chest that comes and goes sometimes um, that I never experienced before. And I don't like it. Like only thinking about it, I get anxiety. And, you know, I have really bad anxiety um, in life, but it's just a roller, roller coaster of emotions that I don't. I never experienced before and that I don't like, you know, at all. And also, on the other hand, makes us see like, you know, nothing lasts forever and you don't know when things are really going to go down and how. And am I really organized enough to like, you know, if you have a house, you need to have like some sort of document that protects you for whoever is alive, can take care of your matters after you die. Like, there's just so much that I didn't know that I'm learning. Um, that it's a really a wake up call. And if you guys have any questions or you want me to do a video of what to do here and there, now that I have a little bit of more, like, I don't know at all, I guess I'm going through it now, but, you know, have a better understanding. Um, just let me know, of you know, the process of death or, you know, after somebody dies, things like that. It's, um, it's a topic I feel people really don't talk a lot because it's very painful and it's not fun. But it, it, it is inevitable. It, like, it's inevitable. Like, we cannot do anything to stop death. And that's the only thing we have for sure. Because, matter of fact, we don't even have for sure that we're going to be born. We just, like, boop, we get born. We create it. Here we are. Now, the only thing for sure that we have is we're going to die. When? We don't know. But that's the truth. And um, when I think about my life... I want to be remembered as somebody who did good in the world. And I want to be remembered, you know, by the positive things that I did and the experiences that I myself, I feel at this point I owe to myself and whatever, you know, that means whether it's traveling or helping people or, you know, I've been part of a volunteer program for the past three and a half years. Um, and I retired from that, but I feel like I should get another volunteer program and, you know, do things for myself. That's all we can do, you know. And you know what? And with this, I close 100 years from now. None of this is going to matter. Like, we're just going to be the millennials. And that's just going to be the topic. 
once in a blue moon, nobody's going to remember what I, who I was, what I did for a living. And that's okay with me, but you know, like it's just put things in perspective. Why am I going after money, after all these stress, after all this stuff that is going to stay here anyways? Don't I have something better to do with my time, you know? So um, finding that balance is where I'm at in life right now. And um, I want to enjoy and do things that I like to do, like filming videos. I'm not the best in editing, so probably I'm going to, you know, post this video as I recorded it. And uh, maybe that's why I don't post that many videos. Um, but I do enjoy filming and I do enjoy the YouTube. So find things that you love. Make sure that you are doing the best you can. You're living life like to the fullest and the best of your ability and enjoy when you're going through the lows when you're going through like normal life and when you're going through the highs because life is a freaking roller coaster like it's gonna be good sometimes it's gonna be bad sometimes it's gonna be very bad but nothing stays the same which is what i learned on meditation and why i'm such a fan of meditation and i feel like everybody should do meditation like you are watching like you need to do meditation Go on YouTube and like type in, why I say that? <laughs> Go on YouTube and type like meditation for relaxing or to like mindfulness meditation. And there's a bunch of videos with people guiding you through the meditation. And at the beginning, you don't really feel a difference. But at the end, you do. You do like it took me six months to start to understand the concept. I think I'm a little silly of understanding concepts. And that's why I want to do like the whole video about like Roth IRAs and retirements because I didn't know any of it. I, I heard about it, but I didn't know what that meant. So, um, you know, I, you, it's going to take a while to understand a simple concept of taking a deep breath, holding it and paying your attention into your nose and your breathing. And that's it. It's going to take a while. But once you get a hold of it, it is truly beneficial. It truly calms you down. It truly it truly gives you a sense of consciousness and and being mindful over your life and the things that you do and the choices you make. So um, anyway, that's all I have to say, guys. Um, I hope you're watching <laughs> till now. I've been talking for a while, but I love you so much. Um, you're going to see definitely more of me this year, God willing. And um, I hope you enjoy this video. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.